Cycles is Blender's new render engine, more based on the actual physics of light than Blender's internal render engine. The goal is to produce more realistic lighting. The new Cycles render engine is automatically enabled in Blender 2.6. The purpose of this tutorial is to compare the two. In particular, the material and world settings have significantly changed, radically enough so you won't recognize it. Also, the render settings have new panels, integrator and film, that are specific to Cycles. Cycles are still in the development stages, with many settings still either experimental or not implemented. I'll point these out as we go. Also, since the Cycles rendering engine is based on nodes, I'll give you a general introduction to how Cycles interacts with nodes, in particular with material nodes, now called shaders. So with that, let's get started. First, I'll remove any lighting effects from the Blender internal render engine. The idea is to see how Cycles works, without any influence from Blender internal. The first thing we do is delete the object that gives the default scene light, the lamp. Press F12 to render. The cube renders in black silhouette. Why is the scene totally black? The reason is we still have lighting from the world. We want a totally black render so Cycles can work its magic. To do that, we need to delete the world. Press F12 to return to 3D view. Click on the World tab. The reason the medium gray background still renders is because the horizon color still renders as the background. Let's get rid of that. Click on the X icon to delete the world. Press F12 to render. Now we have a big black rectangle, exactly what we want. Press Escape to return to the 3D view. Whatever rendering we do from now on will be based on cycles, with no effect from the Blender internal renderer. Now it's time to activate cycles. Cycles is built into Blender 2.6. To activate it, Click on the drop-down in the center of the information window, which currently displays Blender Render, and change the renderer to Cycles Render. If you don't see Cycles Renderer, you might have an older version of Blender, a 2.5 Alpha or Beta build in which Cycles was not yet integrated into Blender. If that's so, go to Blender.org and install the latest version. Press F12 to render. Interestingly, we don't get a black rectangle. Instead, we get the default cube with a white background. I'm not actually sure why the background is white, since there's no world. Press Escape to return to the 3D view. Anyway, let's click on the New button in the World context to create a new world, to see what Cycles does to it. We now have different settings for the world than before. The surface is background, and the background color is medium gray. Press F12 to render. Now the background is medium gray, actually exactly medium gray, R, G, and B, all 0.5, which is not precisely the default world color for the Blender internal. Blender's internal color is a bit off medium gray. The Cycles world settings are more limited than Blender internal. Really, the only thing we can do is change the background color and its strength. There are other settings when you click on the background button, but I was not able to get anything other than a black world. I'll turn up the strength to 20 and render. The background is so intense that the cube silhouette is washed out. I'll return the strength to 1 and render. The cube silhouette is back. A number of panels are gone. Let's return to the Blender internal world for a second. Ambient occlusion, indirect lighting, environment lighting, gather, mist, and stars are gone. I'll return to the cycles world which has just the background color and strength. If you want ambient occlusion, stars, or mist, you might consider compositing, rendering in two passes, one using Blender internal, the other using cycles. That's a subject for another tutorial. For now, let's build our test scene with Suzanne in a ground plane. Delete the default cube. Press Shift FC to set the 3D cursor at the origin. Add a ground plane, Shift A, Mesh, Plane. Scale it up five times, S5, enter. Switch to camera view, numpad zero. Add Suzanne, shift A, mesh monkey. Move it up in the Z direction, one blender unit, so we can see how the shadows look. Smooth Suzanne, click on the smooth button in the tool shelf. Give her a subsurface subdivision of three, with control three, and press F12 to render. 
The monkey has a gray material. What's interesting is that even with no lights, we see a softer, more realistic shadow of Suzanne on the ground plane than we saw in the Blender internal renderer. I'll go to the Materials tab and create a new material for Suzanne. Here's where the settings are radically different, perhaps even more than the world settings. There are new panels for surface, volume, and displacement. The old panels for things like ray tracing, specular shading, ray mirror, and subsurface scattering are gone. We'll focus on surface. I'll change the monkey's color to a light green and render. The default surface setting is diffuse BSDF, which is analogous to the diffuse color in a Blender internal. The magic comes when we change to another type of surface. Cycles comes with presets for glossy, glass, translucent, transparent, and velvet materials. I'll change the material to glossy and render. I'll change the material to glass and render. I'll change the material to emission and render. Emission has an interesting effect. It is as if the monkey turned into a volumetric lamp. The monkey is emitting light. This actually highlights a big difference between cycles and Blender internal. The light source in Blender internal comes from lamps, which don't have any volume. In the real world, light comes from objects, such as a light bulb or the sun, which do have volume. All objects in the scene emit some light in the real world. To make the shadows look more realistic, Cycles calculates the shadows looking at all of this into account. Instead of lamps, the conventional lighting setup in Cycles comes from planes with an emission material, positioned similarly to lamps in the Blender internal renderer. I'll give the monkey a glossy look. Then I'll go to the plane object, add a material, set it to the glass BSDF, and give it a purple type color. I'll render the scene. Now we see the reflection of Suzanne on the glass table. Cycles materials are node based. I'll select the monkey. To show the node setup, I'll switch to the compositing scene preset, which is a good setup for working with nodes. The default node setup is compositing, which is a topic for another tutorial. I'll click on the first sphere called shader nodes. They were called material nodes in earlier 2.4x versions of Blender. Pressing Shift A and selecting shaders shows the different cycle shaders available. They're the same as the drop down in the materials context. I'll go back to the default scene. Rendering in cycles is done in passes. The more passes, the more physically accurate the render. You can also render while you model. In the 3D view, a new viewport shading option, Render Mode, has been added. If you click on it, you can render as you model. The passes and other rendering information, such as the render time, are displayed in the upper left corner of the 3D viewport. If you change the model, the scene automatically re-renders starting at pass 1. The render looks grainy with a lot of rectangular artifacts at first but with subsequent passes these artifacts are reduced as the render becomes more clear. The default number of passes is 10 in the preview. You can change this by clicking on the camera icon, scrolling down to the integrator panel, opening the panel up, and setting preview to another number. I'll change the preview to 20. I'll move the monkey. The scene starts rendering, but instead of 10 passes it will render 20 passes. You can play around with this in other settings. I hope this gives you a good introduction to what's going on in Cycles. It's still in heavy development. I'm sure future Blender versions you'll see many more improvements. Cycles is a great addition to the Blender toolset. I hope you enjoy it. Happy Blendering!